Hi, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Cooper from Automatic, and this is Gabe. Um, and so Automatic is basically um, a device and an app that connects your most expensive computer uh, to your smartphone, which is, a, which is your car. Um, and so this little device, which plugs into any uh, standard OBD port, which is any car made after 1996, has an OBD port. Um, you plug it in, and it connects via Bluetooth to your smartphone. Now Gabe is going to walk us through a little bit of the product. Cool. So when you plug in this guy into your car, uh, we hope you do four things with it. One, uh, we, always know, we always, always know where you parked, because it's always tracking where your car is. So you don't have to manually check in to see where your car is parked. Um, two, anytime your check engine light comes on, uh, we tell you exactly why it comes on. And you can even reset the light from your phone. Um, three, it helps people um, drive more efficiently. So we keep track of all your trips. And we also keep track of three things that affect your fuel efficiency. One of them being hard brakes, hard accelerations, or speeding. Um, and all those things ac account for a what we call a drive score. So the, the higher the drive score, the more you can save in gas. And we've, we've found that you can save up to um, $1,000 a year by driving just more smoothly. And four, if you're in a car crash, um, Automatic will call uh, the emergency assistance uh, for you and send help on the way. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the app right now. So what you see here is the, the iPhone app. Um, at the top, you see a summary of all my information for the week. So you see here the total miles I drove, the total time I drove that week, how much money I spent in gas, and my average MPG for that week. Below it, you see where my car is parked. As you guys can see, it's parked right here on the, um, on the parking lot. And then you also see a, a chronological timeline of all my trips. So this one, for example, is a trip from our office to here. You can also tap the map to see with more detail where I'm parked. And, and these are the things that we track um, for your driving. So we track your heart brakes, your speeding, and your heart accelerations. So you can see on this trip, I had two heart, two heart brakes. And that all accounts to my score. So this week so far, I have a score of 95. If I go back a few weeks, you can see uh, my different scores. So this is Automatic. We call it your smart driving assistant. Um, you can find it at automatic.com. Or uh, recently, we, we got into the Apple Store as well. So you can find it at there as well. Right. Um, the app is free, and the link is ninety nine ninety five. No subscription fees, just the one time. What about the hardware? Right. Uh, sorry, we call this the link, and this is what plugs into your your car. So for ninety nine ninety five. Does the app work without the device? No, you, it, the device is required. Are you the guys that did this on Kickstarter originally? How much did you raise, and what point you're at now? Because your competitors and you know who they are did it on Kickstarter. <laughs> we did not go through Kickstarter. So those are your competitors. So explain who they are. How you differentiate yourselves from them. Right. Um, so we are the only ones that have launched so far. So. <laughs> what is your established customer or park or how many devices do you have deployed so far? Twenty thousand. You asked about our user base. We have, you know, tens of thousands of users right now using the device. So, so I love the concept. So, a question, which is maybe further down the line, since you have access to the OBD port, could one go in and tune my car? Say, you know, since we're accessing the, the ECU potentially, <laughs> are there ways to patch into it and you know further upsell potentially? 
pull the meter? In terms of security breach or? No, <laughs> I'm thinking more of performance tuning. Right? Uh, see, uh, no, there, there are apps already that hook up to your OBD port and they give you all sorts of data. Um, but we're not geared for the market, we're more for the average consumer and how to make that person be a better driver. So the link is um, purposely dumb in a way that uh, it doesn't store any information. And that's why we're able to uh, not have a, a subscription model for the link. It actually uses the power of your smartphone and store all the information uh, encrypted in the cloud. No cache. So, uh, yeah, there is cache. So the, the question, the reason I asked the question is that that means that the insurance company can you know, possibly have access to my driving record, though I may not want to have them, no. let them have it. Uh, well, they well, can no, it's a, it's it's a close link. How I'm driving. It's well, a close yes, they link. can, it's fine. I, they I, can I, subpoena I, anything. anything wow. kept in the cloud, there is a risk of, you know, whatever. And that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get email. <laughs> so, uh, the crash scenario, does the device have to be paired with the phone during the crash? Uh, the question was for a crash to, um, for it to call, um, uh, 911, does it have to be paired with the phone? And the answer is yes, it does need to be paired with your phone. So you do need to have your phone with you in the car, yes. But it pairs automatically. As long as the app is open, it'll pair automatically to your phone. Can an insurance company have access to this data? Can an insurance company have access to this data? The answer is right now, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to understand, your business model is to make money from selling the link, and that's it. Exactly, so your yeah. whole business model is just selling a $10 device. Uh, no, no, it's 100. 100. Okay, 100 I would like to set up alerts so to, to remind me for uh, maintenance uh, service uh, uh, coming up, maybe in a couple of miles or 100 miles. Yeah, so the question was about um, alerts about maintenance. Um, and this is something that we've been talking about a lot in the office, and it's definitely a feature that we think will be rolling out in the near future. Yeah. Who are your primary users? You, you've given us a consumer scenario. Um, are you also looking at you know, fleets of trucks and things like that? Uh, right now, no, no fleet support. Uh, we just launched in March, and we've had uh, quite a bit of success with just uh, a consumer. Consumer, and that's where, where we're aiming to be. How do I know where that port is? So the port is usually underneath the steering wheel, um, right around your, your foot pedals. Every car since 1996 sold in the U.S. has one of those. It's the same port your mechanic uses when you go for a smart check. We're not currently looking for funding, but you should email us. <laughs> one last question, guys. There's more and more insurance companies that are putting plugs on the OBD2 port. So does it mean that when somebody does that, that customer is no longer potentially your customer? Not necessarily. We, we offer things, because we're not tied to an insurance company, that <coughs> provide different value for that customer. Now what that means, people will want to use that OBD2 for insurance, pay as you go, or those industries. So as soon as somebody decides to go and do that, they can no longer use, they're not part of your SAM anymore. Is that correct? The OBD port is now used by the insurance company and it's not available. So the, the question was, um, if you have like something for your insurance company already plugged in, can you use the automatic? Um, the answer is yes, there are splitters for OBD ports. So you can use both devices. We haven't done extensive testing on that yet, but um, theoretically it is possible. But cr things like crash alert might not work. So thank you, Automatic. You guys will stick around, and if you have any other questions, feel free to go on the ground.